Good afternoon. I'm lucky enough that I really don't have to answer that question. But I have three um, very learned and experienced uh, professional people um, to whom I will task to answer that question. But as we get along um, to it, because I think at the end of the day we will answer that particular question and many others. Um, I would like now to invite each and every one of uh, the panelists to actually introduce themselves. I'll give them maybe two minutes or three minutes to introduce themselves, say who they are, um, because I believe who they are is important to what they do. And then what they do and how whatever they do as individuals, as institutions, as foundations, is relevant in the industry, right? And then from there on, then we'll start asking questions once we know different backgrounds. And so, um, let me go ladies first, and I will start at my extreme end, Natalie. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Natalie Lukanar, and I am the founder and director of Saudi Academy. Uh, and executive director of Peña Africa, a former uh, music label. Um, I am still also part of the management of Heart the Band. Um, yes, uh, so what we do at Saudi Academy, we are an artist development program. We focus on developing talented singers uh, and helping them make their, make their musical dreams come true. Okay? Um, so we try to uh, give them skills and knowledge musically, um, but also uh, songwriting, you know, inspiring their creativity uh, to uh, awaken. Um, and we also work on um, uh, making them DIY artists, because we believe that most artists will not probably immediately find a manager, and maybe some of them and many of them will never find a manager, so we, should, we try to teach them how to manage themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Another round of applause for her, please. Thank you. Wandiri Karimi, tell us about yourself. I am Wandiri Karimi. I'm the director at the Kenya Conservatory of Music. Um, that is what I do. But who I am, um, I am a musician who is a lawyer. And I introduce myself like that for a reason. I am in a band called Mathri, and I have been a guitarist for more than half my life. That's, that's the instrument I play. But what became clear to me when I was in law school was there was a need for us musicians to be in a place where we are making money off what we are doing. And um, gladly in 2016, I got uh, the opportunity to work at the conservatoire. And what we do there is we actually give education, affordable education, affordable quality education to people who want to pursue a career in music or are just doing music to enhance their life like I did when I was in um, the, the university and now I'm here and I'm the director and, and this is what my life has been about. Oh, wow, great. Please clap for her. Thank you. John, tell us about yourself um, and what you do for the industry. Okay. My name is John Kigada. I'm a leadership educator, a music leadership educator. Uh, essentially, I teach musicians or music industry stakeholders on leadership. So whether you're a rapper, producer, song in, sound engineer, whatever you do in the music industry, I teach you about leadership. And uh, that's what I do. But I'm, uh, I'm the founder and the director of Saifa Taifa Foundation, which is an entrepreneurial leadership uh, agency. Entrepreneurial leadership is simply merging two concepts, entrepreneurship and leadership, and teaching about those two. So what we do is we give scholarships to music industry stakeholders to study in universities. Right now I have a project running with uh, Daystar University, and there's also one I'm working with, uh, Riara University. So my, my aim is to get... Uh, ordinary people in the music industry to study a one-week or two-week course at these universities. Uh, previously, I've given scholarships to people to study at International Leadership University, where they studied uh, leadership and management. So I'm keen on educating musicians on entrepreneurship and leadership. 
Please clap for him. Thank you. Natalie, let me start with you. Um, and what you, what you do is um, prepare positions um, for the industry. If I was to summarize it in being very, very general. Um, but if I may ask, what is the industry? What, what, what is this animal we talk about called the industry? Right? We, we talk about music education and the industry, culture and the industry. So let's start from the basics and just explain to us that the, the musicians who you're creating into the industry, what are they getting into? What is the industry? So as a singer who doesn't know how to... No. <laughs> um, so the industry for me is not what is not necessarily only what is defined on the outside. It depends also on the student and their needs because not all the students that we work with want to be uh, musicians who live off their music 100%. You know, there are also um, people who, sit, who study singing but who are also still law students, yeah? Um, so for me, the industry is, or whatever we prepare them for is what is, what is their dream. Um, so if, that's, if they want to make money off their music, or if that is to be a great uh, performer who sings on weekends for fun, um, but at the highest level possible for them, or if it's somebody who loves working in studio or composing for other people, for us that is the industry. It's all the industry. I think for me, the music industry is for everybody who makes music and everybody who works with music. I don't know. Is that like still vague? Um, I don't know. Wandiri, what is the industry? Uh, I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, for me, the music industry is that ecosystem where, where I like to look at things in, in, in threes. So we are looking at a place where a, a student comes... Well, not, I am looking at it as a student from the conservatory point of view, but what is it somebody wants to express? How is that thing expressed? musically speaking, and, and how does that audience interact with what is being expressed. Um, I feel that uh, the music industry, as we call it, is not an industry in the sense that um, the, amount of, uh, the amount of money that it's making is not an industry size amount of money. So I'd call it a sector for now <laughs> until we get... I, I would say we're building towards an industry, but this ecosystem has... It has um, aspiring musicians, it has an audience, it has um, educators, it has um, government, uh, which, which uh, that is not as, as, as strong as it should be. It has um, advertisers and, and, and um, sponsors who, who support these kind of um, or, um, conferences. So I think we, we, when we look at the industry, I would say if you're looking to come into the industry, you are looking to come into a myriad of uh, a myriad of what's what I'm looking for? Um, a myriad of careers. When people say music, they just say musician, but musician is not the only thing that's in the music industry. The music industry has a number of careers and there is a number of things that you can do in this ecosystem. That's why I call it a, an ecosystem. All right. Um, and John, you, you do train um, you know, music leadership um, and entrepreneurship for, for them to you know, better themselves or make an impact um, in society, but more so in the industry. So what is your take on this ecosystem or this sector um, that is called the industry? What do you think it is? And what are you preparing musicians into? The, the industry is... Uh, industry, the whole industry, from an academic point of view, it means production and manufacture independent of commerce. So you look at a raw product that enters an assembly line, no raw materials that enter an assembly line, and then they become a product. So when you talk about the music industry, from an academic point of view, we are talking about songwriting, arrangement, actually songwriting, composition, arrangement, then we have notation, then we have recording, 
mastering, mixing, and it ends there. Then now we go into commerce. Commerce simply means the aids to trade. So we have banking and all these things which aid the trade. The transfer of that, that product to another owner. So now that's where commerce comes in. Now commerce, uh, we talk about duplication of the master, the master copy. And then we have the, the inlay, the branding, the merchandising, uh, distribution, and uh, advertising. Now that's where the commerce comes in. So there's music commerce and there's music industry. So I hope you've understood the difference. Music industry has to do with preparing that product to come out of the assembly line. The raw material is the song which someone has in his mind. Then now it is packaged, prepared to be sold. So the music industry is what I've just told you. It, it, it deals with songwriting, uh, arrangement, um, composition, recording, mixing, and mastering. So that's what the music industry is all about from an academic point of view. So my, my main aim is to educate people in the music industry about leadership, that they are leaders, that they have influence, they are popular, they have uh, fame. So they need to carry themselves as leaders. That's my main burden. All right. And we'll come back um, to that aspect of, of uh, education um, for, for musicians. But let's now get into music education and music education in Kenya. Um, I, I happen to be privy to know that uh, Wandiri, you've taught at Technical University in the music department. Um, Natalie, you have the Saudi uh, Academy. Um, and all that is aspects of music education. Um, and I guess the question that is relevant here is what you're teaching or what you've taught and what you're teaching at, at Conservatoire and what you're teaching at Saudi Academy. Is it really, what kind of an impact is it making? And is it relevant to this industry that we are trying to sort of like define and find out what exactly it is? What you're doing, is it relevant? Is it making an impact? Let me start with you, Wanderi. Um, thank you for the question. <laughs> um, w uh, the Kenya Conservatory of Music has been in existence for the last 70 four years. And when it started out, it was a classical music school. And it was classical music because the people who made the school were what we, we call in GHC, as I did it, the settlers. So uh, when the settlers left and, and, and um, the, the, the conservatoire passed on, we continued that tradition of classical music. Now the misconception is that classical music is not relevant in Kenya. But I disagree. And I disagree because the, the requirements, for example, to enter a, a, a degree program at KU, for example. You want to go and do a, a degree in KU, Pastia, B.Ed. Music, or BMAS. They will ask you for a, 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 a qualification called ABRSM theory or ABRSM, ABRSM uh, practical, meaning that you have studied your instrument or your, uh, your chosen, uh, yes, your chosen instrument up to a certain level. And they will say, you need to be the equivalent of grade five. Now, what is ABRSM? It is the Associate Board of Royal Schools of Music, and it's an examination body that we, we administer the exam, uh, who administer the exam through us. So is that a relevant tool? I think it is, because we are able to take students from the point of zero knowledge to the place where they are able to step into their first year of B.Ed. music, first year of B.Ed. Uh, BMAS at KU, having a certain knowledge of basic knowledge of music. And is that important? Yes, because how you're going to form your song, how you're going to form your, your ideas. You may be a musician who wants to, to write a pop song, but there are music rules. But for you to break the music rules, because that's what some, t some people do, you must know what they are. So the relevance of the education that the Kenya Conservatory of Music offers, yes, it is relevant. My, my, my question, I guess, to, to the rest of the panelists would be, 
are we are we giving uh, our 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 clients the, the the true picture of what the industry ecosystem um, uh, family sector whatever word you use are we actually equipping them with the with the with the knowledge of what is going on out there. Because I think sometimes we have a very insular way of looking at things. That, that was where I think our disagreement about whether it's relevant or not would be. And, and I will come to that. Uh, so uh, hold that question for a minute. But Natalie, I was here this morning, or this yeah, late this afternoon, or early this afternoon, um, and I heard you saying to one of your, the contestants here, I think the, the, the pianist, Learn your skills. Yes. Um, learning your skills is a very classical um, term. I mean, it's a very do re mi fa so la ti do. You know, let's let's learn that. Mm. Um, so why is that? You know, now relevant in in a contemporary, in a more hip hop, in a more uh, you know, even for rappers, for example, you know, learning those skills is that necessary? Right. I mean. Okay, so for me, what I meant there, learn your skills. So there's a few different angles I look at this. I studied pop music in the Netherlands. I have a degree in singing and music business. The way our university taught is we, uh, we were taught relevant music theory. And I'm sorry I disagree with you on ABRSM. I think it's an irrelevant way of teaching music. That's how I was taught initially. I'm a, I started as a violinist. Um, I, read, I started reading notes when I was seven. Um, and reading notes, okay, fine. But if I look at the ABRSM books, and I have, because I've had students who don't understand half the things that are there, and they have to sit an exam, and I've tried to teach grade five, and I'm lost half the time, because it is so theoretical that the practical use is it's not relevant. Also, there are, there's a different in how um, African traditional music theory, there's a difference between Afri African traditional music theory, the tuning is different. I am now a student, a proud student. I'm, uh, okay, long story. I was in Zanzibar uh, for Saudi Zabusara uh, last weekend and I met um, a traditional Tanzanian musician and he's now my teacher because I want to understand the difference between the Western classical theory and this, and the African music theory. So I am learning skills. He started by teaching me a major pentatonic skill, starting from up, going down. If people are lost, I'm sorry. It's a little, of my geeky, a little bit of my geeky side. I love it. Um, why is it relevant? So I, when I said learn your skills, I meant, yes, learn your For me, skills is basic. It's like the identity of a song. If you can't stay on key, and whether you learn that by understanding that there is a tone, tone, semitone, yeah? or by understanding this is how it sounds like and these are the notes that I should play, I don't think it matters a lot. So the theory that I studied that was relevant that I use every day is skills and progressions and chords. That's it. So is it relevant, the theory, to like popular music? But I, yes and no. For singers, it's a different story, as I feel, than for instrumentalists. Um, but then again, make the theory practical. So as a singer, when I was studying uh, ear training, so fetch, I don't know what you call it, um, in the university, from, for us, we had a special curriculum. So for example, I studied pop music. Do you know En Vogue? Mm -hmm. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it. That harmony, and that's super, it's a four-part harmony. So for my, one of my final exams, we had to sing the four-part harmony, writ, like we had to write it out first and then sing it to the chords non-stop, without stopping, from harmony to harmony. So for me, I needed that because now I'm a teacher and I need to be able to hear the harmonies. But for a singer like Waidera, um, was would it be relevant for, for you to know, like to be able to read the notes? I'm not so sure. But maybe it's also a question I would like to ask, you know, the people who are here. And maybe Cero, where is Cero, is she there? Cosero studies music and at KU, and she also studied at Saudi Academy. What, what I'm curious about is, um, you know, the, 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 let's, let's talk about the relevance of the music education um, in terms of the, the structure of, for example, the, the standardized tests, which ABRSM is all about. Um, Wandiri has said it's relevant. You've said it's not relevant. But we have musicians who have actually come out of that system 
of standardized music um, and and very structured lessons and became you know huge uh, hits, right? Alicia Keys, for example. Um, but we'll get to that, right? Um, but John, um, in terms of music education, the way you know music education, um, and and knowing what goes on at universities plus what you're also teaching, um, what do you think the 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 midway being right between the very structured um, lessons and the very not I wouldn't call them unstructured, but I would say more 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 targeted um, way of of of, of teaching because if you're going into contemporary, then you're more trained towards the contemporary. If you're going to classical, you know, you know that's more targeted. Um, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Listening to the two and knowing from your own background. I think, um, well, I'd say largely the music that is taught in Kenya is, is not relevant to the music industry. Largely. And when I'm talking about largely, I'm talking about many uh, Christian universities that are out there, they don't, they, they tend to lean towards church music, for example. And, um, and I don't really see the relevance of church music to a person who wants to enter the music industry as a gospel music artist. So most of them don't want to do church music. And uh, the opportunities that are there when you've studied church music is either you become a church pastor, I mean a music pastor in a church, or uh, the other alternatives, maybe you can go into tuning uh, instruments and stuff. But my point is, most of the music that is taught in Kenya is not relevant to the music industry uh, because most guys like pop music. And if you're not relevant in that space, you'll tend to be very technical and academic, but at the same time, you're not really meeting a need that is there. So you need to most universities need to shift their curriculum and teach in ways that are socially uh, reflective and very interactive. So that as a student, you get to know, you need to have mentorship with those who are in the music industry so that when you come out, your product is relevant to the music industry. But if you're just in a very academic institution and you do that course for like four years, um, chances are to make that shift into popular music might be very difficult for you. So that is the challenge that we as educators have, to be relevant when, in our training so that we, we really become um, we're able to adapt to the fads and uh, the fashion that is out there. Yeah, so that is the challenge that we as educators have. So then, are we saying then... Um we can only shape music education um, primarily only based on what is is required for the industry. Is that is that is that what is that is that, is that I mean? Are we saying music education should be targeted only to the industry, or or? Can it or should it be also from um, Wandiri's point of view where it's self-fulfillment, <laughs> right? Um, and you want to do it for that, Natalie. Well, for me, honestly, I think what I prepare my students for is for what they want to say. It's not, I do not tell them what they need to say. They tell me what they want to say. My job as a teacher is to make them tell their stories in the best way that is in them. Because, and that... But that is a discussion about why is art art, right? And art, okay, there are certain rules. Stay on key, you know, have good rhythm, understand the song structure. But then at the same time, for me, is it, it's, for me it only becomes great when I believe somebody and when something touches me. When, when the music can make me cry, smile, feel something. So for me, I prepare students to express themselves and I believe that's what we all intend to do, right? When did you, when a student comes to the conservatoire? and wants to be a rapper <laughs> at the Kenya Conservatory of Music. How do you help a student like that? 
he wants to be a rapper in the music industry in a global world. So um, we've, we've, I've had the opportunity to work on several um, programs that had to do with uh, people having to explain what their music is. Now, if a rapper comes and says, I want to be a rapper, but then I don't know what the key of my song is, there is a problem. So how would I equip that rapper is I'd, I'd get them basic music skills so that you know when your song starts, whatever, whatever beat or whatever note that, that your, your, your musician is going to play is going to be in this key. And you're going to, if you're singing rapping like Akina Drake, then you're going to have to sing rap in, in the right key. So it's going to be voice lessons, it's going to be theory lessons, because you still need to know the rules. I disagree with the point of view that, that, that uh, music education is not relevant because this is why we are in the quagmire that we are at. Where you have a musician who comes to a TV show, let's say like Hook Studio, but you don't know when, what your key, the key of your song is. And that's a problem. I think we need to separate preference with reality. If you prefer to be a rapper who has no knowledge of music, then you're, you're going to just swim in the shallow end. But if you want to swim in the deep end, then you have to equip yourself. There's uh, several musicians who are well-known who are students of ours. And they're not coming to us because they don't know uh, what music is or they don't know what their music theory is or they don't know how to play their instrument. They are coming to us to equip themselves further. Now, the ABRSM is just a standard. A standard that allows you, for example, if you want to go to school and you want to have this qualification. So if you want that standard, you can get it. But we also have teachers who will bring out um, your, your ear training. I happen to know that you're a wonderful voice teacher. And I know some of your products. And they're wonderful singers. And they're not wonderful singers before, because they sat for ABRSM. They're wonderful singers because they were equipped by a teacher who gave them the tools to sing their jazz music well, to sing their, their church music well, to sing their classical music well. So I think we, if we separate preference, which is I prefer not to be a classical musician, that's fine. But you cannot prefer not to have the tools that you need to be a good musician. And isn't that the, 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 the basis of, of the, the structured music education that, John, you said is irrelevant in universities? I, I know I teach in a university, and that is what, those are the basics that we give. Um, and then, therefore, Wandiri says, you need those basics, you need to know music, you need to understand music to be able to be a better musician, right? Or to create your art better, right? Um, but your standpoint is, it's irrelevant. So where, where, do we, where, 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 does, where do we meet, if at all, in between here? Okay, let me just clarify something. I didn't say that it's irrelevant, uh, the music, I mean the the education is irrelevant. What I was saying was, I was just bringing a case in point, like in Christian universities, if you look at the curriculum that they're teaching, they'll tell you this is for church music. I don't want to name names. <laughs> but, I, oh, okay. Huh? Uh, they're saying there's a conflict here. But just, just uh, do this. Go to a Christian university take the prospectus and uh, get to find out what kind of music are they teaching. So I've gone to several. I've gone to so many. I think like six of them. And they are inclined to church music. And it's written there, church music. And I'm like, okay, this is Willie Paul, Bahati. How does church music help them in their music industry? Um, so that is what I have um, against the Christian universities. That they are targeting they, they have a pastoral heart they are wearing and they are assuming these guys will be music uh, worship leaders and they'll be pastors, uh, worship pastors in their churches. So it's like a one size fits all. But if you look at uh, schools like Technical University, KU, they're very relevant to, to, to the music industry. KU and Technical University, they're very relevant. But if you go to this uh, Christian uh, Universities, just take a prospectus and look. You'll see written church music. 
So that's where that's a problem I have, especially the the, the Christian universities. But when it comes to other universities. Uh, like KU Technical University, they're so relevant to the music industry because you need those basic skills uh, to make it. You need to know the rules. Thank you, John. And I'll be coming to the audience um, in in a few minutes. Um, but I guess the, my my question, perhaps, before I go to the audience, to the panel, is um, does music education affect the industry or is the industry affect does the industry affect music education or you know what 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 comes how does it what comes first right um, the chicken or the egg right is it is it we have musicians who now need education or do we take education i mean music education and train um, the people for the music industry let me start with john and then go that way you know, music is, uh, okay, I don't know if some of you have ever read the Bible. If you read the Bible, you'll discover something. Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, it talks about Lucifer, who was apparently a musician. If you look at the Bible, especially the King James Version. So music was there even before mankind. The angels sang and rejoiced when the earth was being formed. It says they, 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 they joined together and they sang. So music is older than human beings. So music as an industry, as I told you, the, the word industry means production and uh, manufacture independent of commerce. So music industry, the song, uh, writing a song, arranging, composing, notation, uh, recording, that is, is very old. It's older than us. So you need to know those rules. Uh, so music itself comes before the musician. It's not the musician who decides now, these are the rules. No, there are rules which have been laid there before you are, you are, you are, you are created. So that's the, that's the approach I'll use, the biblical approach. Um, I think we are at a place where the industry is already growing. The ecosystem is already growing. And, and we have to adapt or we die. That, that's my attitude to life. So if you don't adapt, then you'll just be overtaken. So if, if, if we, are, we are running programs, and that's, that's what we do at the conservatoire, is we, we are educating people before they get into the industry. So you have six-year-olds to all the way to 18-year-olds learning before they can even decide that this is something that they want to do. And then we have people who already are in the industry who want to grow. So I think we have to have an approach that has both, both ways. Because if we don't, then we die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I completely agree with you. You agree? I agree, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. We have an agreement. Yes. <laughs> um, I think, just going back to the theoretical part, like for me that's... What is important is that theory does never make you worse, okay? If you do pass your grade 5 or 8 ABRSM, it's going to make you better, obviously, at the end of the day. Is it necessary? I say no, it's not. I think, I think we are on one. I'd say the, the knowledge never hurt anybody. Exactly. That's where I'm at. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's where I think we agree. Um, so... For in for in Saudi Academy, the industry is super important because we want to be, you know, many of my students have a dream of becoming becoming musicians, and that means we have to constantly evaluate. And every term at Saudi Academy has different content. I would go as far as saying that. That's why also my team at Saudi Academy exists. So they're all professional musicians. I mean, between 22 and I am 32 years old. You know, we're all young musicians. We have both feet in the industry, as. Uh, an artist manager, I still challenge myself to go on stage and sing. Mordecai from Heart the Band, who has a musical career. Uh, Mandela, uh, obviously a, a fantastic performer. Waxy, singer-songwriter. Priska, a do-it-yourself artist. We practice what we preach, and we preach what we practice, which means we constantly develop and reevaluate. So I think the industry and the education should go hand in hand. Actually, it should be like a cycle that's ongoing. Okay, let me open it up now to the, to the audience. Um,
please state your question. Be it, make it short. Um, state your name, um, where you're coming from, uh, if you're a musician, and then address it to whoever you want in the panel. So, start with the gentleman right here. Thank and you. please stand up. I'm a teacher when uh, people <laughs> Thank ask you very much. Uh, there we go. Uh, to all the panelists and to you, the moderator, I am Haman from Bayemba Culture Foundation, uh, Uganda. Uh, my question was simply about the African music uh, theory. Uh, I wanted to know whether that musician was a part of the Msafiri. But besides that, uh, my contribution, uh, just hearing this entire talk and discussion, I think that it all drove to the same direction, thinking that uh, what uh, the conservator is doing is great because we still have people who cannot define themselves as musicians or singers or whatever it is. And I think that the theory, be it old or new, it is important. We need to know the skill, we need to grasp it. And once we do that, we can decide which direction we want to take. As a violinist, when you graduate from the conservatoire, you can decide to then go to Peña and do whatever you want to do. Write the songs, sing them, forget the violin if that's what you want to do, if you want to strike through, you know, because I was seeing people, you have a, a guitarist playing for you and then you're singing your heart out, you don't even know the notes that you're singing, but you're passionate, that's what you want to, to push. So I think that's beautiful, and then you can live your life as that kind of performer. And for uh, my brother John, and I think that if people want to go to institutions that teach music, but they are religious institutions, they have a right to push religion in line with music, which means that there are other options for those musicians that go to those institutions. They, there are other options like the conservator. Go there, they won't talk about Jesus or God, but you still learn the skill. So I think that it is important that the music education is taken seriously for everyone that is a part of the music industry because everything even the music music education is a part of of the ecosystem thank you thank you very much um sorry yes you, uh, you asked if it was musafiri yes it's him yes i'm now a student a proud student and of course for any any musician wanting to better themselves Right. Um, we were having a discussion earlier today. Any musician who wants to better themselves, you better yourself through education, right? Um, through music education. Whether it's you go to class, um, you learn. Whether you you study under a master musician, um, like in African music, or you go to the University of Google, right? It is still uh, an education, and you, it it is part of it. And I think um, education. Is or music education is is a stepping stone for anyone who wants to become a better uh, musician. But I'll go to questions. We have uh, we have questions. I'll, I'll I'll come back to you. Let me just go to other people first, and then we'll continue. The gentleman right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, name. Please stand up. Say your name and. Uh, Hold your mic properly, please. Yes, mic technique, which okay. is part of music education. Yes. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You see? Still yeah. learning music education. Anyway, sorry. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, I'm the cage bird, MK. Uh, my name go. My, my question goes to Keganda. Um, it's about um, leadership and entrepreneurship, with how you handle it. You know, like if I was, if I wanted to be under your wing as a musician. How would you, what are the logistics of that? And also touch on the two Bible verses, the Lucifer Bible verses. Yeah. Can we, are there other questions that we can take as, uh, for the panel and then we'll just answer them in a, in a flow? Um, let me go gender. There's a lady right here and then the gentleman in white and then uh, the lady in black known as Modoni. Let's start here. Would it be okay if Please, I... Please uh, stand. Thank you. I wanted to speak last, if it's all right. I to speak last. Yes. All right. Give to the gentleman in a white jacket there. Thank you. Hi. Uh, 
I'm Marcel, I'm an artist. I go by Defmatic. Now, uh, this question is open to anyone in the panel. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where there are certain skill sets you can help an artist with that will make him successful in the media industry, but it will conflict inherently with what he is, or that person is as an artist? As in the industry is going in a certain direction, certain uh, things he can do would make him successful, uh, but they would um, conflict with what he is as an artist. Maybe make uh, Adele more Beyonce, and have you ever encountered such a scenario, and how do you deal with that? So the two of you can note that. Yeah. One last one, the back there. Um, I think, oh, sorry, my name is Modoni. I'm a lecturer at Technical University. Um, I would also just to make, make a clarification, first of all, to Mr. John Kegada, I think. And I know for a fact that t uh, Daystar University teaches theory in music, and then it has also other elements of music that are applied in Kenyatta University and Technical University and Maseno University. So from that same fact, we have students who I can even mention who are actually in the industry practicing what they've done and they're not in church. For example, we've got a band which is called the Wanga Band, which I think everybody knows about, and they're big. Three quarters of them are music students. The other one is there's one who's actually teaching Brayburn as a Perry teacher and is uh, from Daystar. So I think a clarification. I don't th there are elements of church music, but I don't think it's the main foundation of their teaching. Just a clarification. Thank you. Should we go to the, quest to the answers now? Then uh, I'm going to the other questions from the panel. Wandiri. Um, on your question about uh, whether there is conflict in what you want to be as an artist and what, what you may need to do as an artist, I think whenever you make a decision to, to go into a career, so uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I'm an advocate of the high court. That's what I went to school to do. I'm a lawyer. So there are two ways of being a lawyer. You can be a straight lawyer. You can be a crooked lawyer. You can. It's, it's, so there are two ways of being a doctor. You can be a straight doctor or you can be a bad doctor. There, there, in every career, there, there are choices that you have to make as a person. Now, the, the, the thing that, about music and, and, and the arts in general that makes it very difficult for, for anyone who's in it is because you have to, um, you're, you're showing a piece of yourself to the world. So when you show a piece of yourself to the world, you feel like you need to make yourself a certain way so that the audience likes you. Because you're trying to make yourself likable to the audience. But if you look at the musicians who are really successful, Prince, I think, was a crazy person. But the, his audience loved him. He, he, with all his craziness, he did whatever he wanted to do, and he wrote his music the way he wanted to. Very, very technically difficult music. But he, he just was Prince, and the world loved him. Uh, Beyonce, for whatever anyone wants to say about her, she's a skilled musician. She does whatever she, she wants to do to, to get herself forward, but th the truth of the matter is she's Beyonce. You cannot take, take away from her. So I think when you look at music, and I, I, I'd like um, to, to make that distinction, that you have to decide as a musician what you want to be about. You need to make the necessary investments, and if it is an investment in music education, then you do that so that you make yourself better. But as a musician, it's, you, you walk into a very risky place if you want to make yourself what you think your audience wants, because your audience changes. So your audience at one time is 15 years old, then they become 20, and then they become 25, then they are 45. So are you going to change yourself every time that they, they change their age? No, you just... You, you be you, and then you do your music. That, that would be my ad advice. Yeah. For me, like, that's a question that you know, has popped up, especially in conversation with big record labels and people who invest lots of money in artists. They often want to take creative control. In other words, they want to tell you how you should sing, what you should wear, what you should say. And my belief also, I mean, as 
an independent small label that we have been, you know, as Peña Africa, is we support people to express what they want to express. I don't believe you can express something that's not true to you. But I mean, the rule to me is, if you're a gospel musician, you have to understand what, what, what that means. If you're not a true believer and you are a gospel musician, do you think the audience is going to believe you? Obviously not, yeah? So I practice what you preach. Again, same thing, you know? Be, make sure that everything that comes out of your mouth as an artist is real and is true to you. If it's not, I don't think it's going to go very far. Thank you. John. Uh, someone had asked about how do you get a scholarship? Well, for now, um, the procedure is has not yet been uh, formalized. So I can't really talk much about that. But in essence, you're supposed to download a form from the website of uh, Riara University. Then you fill the form, we shortlist. Then after that, we publish the names um, on Gazette, probably Pulse or Zuka, I mean uh, the network. Then now the public gets to vote. So, you know, you could be singing in the bathroom. So you need to have evidence that you're actually famous or popular or influential. So now the public will get to SMS vote. Then now the highest voted, depending on the demographics, the constituencies in Nairobi, and then the gender also. We have to balance gender, and then now you'll get the scholarship. So that is in line with Riara University. As for the one at, um, the one I'm planning with uh, Desa University, the plan has not yet been formalized, but in essence, we're supposed to give the, the nominees for Groove Awards. So when that is in place, uh, you will, we will let you know through the press and social media. But these are just plans. They've not yet been actualized. My partnership with the International Leadership University ended, so I'm, not, I'm no longer giving scholarships for guys to study at uh, International Leadership University. So right now I'm looking for partnerships with Daystar University and um, Riara University. Uh, as for the question on Lucifer, the scriptures, go and look for King James. Okay, there are three kinds of Bibles. There's a direct translation, which is a King James version, for example. And then there's a dynamic equivalent translation, where you use words that are dynamically equivalent. Instead of saying uh, brimstone in the King James, the NIV translation will say sulfur, a modern terminology. So we have dynamic equivalent translations like NIV, New International Version. And then now we have a loose translation like the Good News Bible, which can be read by a child. So there are three kinds of Bibles. So I encourage you to take a direct translation Bible like the King James Version and read Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28 from verse 12 to 18. Ezekiel chapter 28 from verse 12 to 18. It talks about Lucifer. And then Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 11 to verse 15. Isaiah chapter 14 from verse 11 to 15. It talks about the anointed cherub who is Lucifer or Halel in Hebrew. Lucifer is Latin. That is a bit divergent from music education, but it's still an education. Great. Um, any other questions from the audience? Do we have questions in the audience? Yes, Mwalimu uh, Mwawira here, Mwalim Obaga there, and uh, the gentleman in that order. Okay, I'm uh, Gibson Mawera from uh, Technical University. Uh, mine, okay, apologies for, for the Professor Kuno, she's not... She's not well, actually. She, that's why she's missed uh, this. She's one of our best educators in the music industry and even in the, those who people are practicing music in other areas. Now, mine is just a clarification of music industry because I think we, we all get lost from uh, the, the, the discourse that I'm hearing here is we are all focusing on a performing artist or songwriter but we are also missing a lot of aspects that bring in the creative support and even technical support to the musicians uh, that make 
uh, all out of the industry move. And that's why I would think of the industry as more broader than just uh, the creation of the product itself, the music. The music, uh, just the product itself, uh, just uh, overs around two people, the, the songwriter and uh, the, performer, uh, the performer. But apart from those two people, there are myriads of other careers that go around, like um, I'm, I'm just admiring the lighting up there that becomes an essence of performance that is very important that you cannot, uh, sometimes if you want to move in that direction, you would need a lot of you know, education, a lot of study. Sound engineering, for example, that would also be an essence or an area that you'd feel like you'd want. So those are the areas that I, I feel we are not, we've not really captured so much in even management she's also a lawyer she doesn't necessarily need to be a musician to to or a performing artist or songwriter to get into that but she really needs to get into into law so to learn to be educated and that's why i would say maybe as a comment actually i'm giving a comment is the relevance of the training and teaching actually should be in tandem to what the industry requires but also as and as a, as a practitioner within the industry, you, for you to fit into that global, uh, because we are all shrinking into a, a kind of a global market, you really need to, not just to practice it, you need to have the, the, the in-depth of, of what you're practicing. I, 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 I've, I feel yet we can be, I can just practice to be a, song, a, a, a vocalist, without necessarily going to a class to be taught the theory of, you know, the production, the vocal production, the anatomy of the voice. But there's something that I would feel I would be lacking if I want to step out into that global, bigger global world, which is very competitive. So for me, is is both should be in tandem. Depends on how far you want to go as a musician or as a music a, a practitioner and also the relevance of the training institution and what they really want to focus into offering. Because if I look at conservator, they offer uh, a basically classical inclined uh, curriculum that if that they've been reviewing their curriculum, like percussion, actually. They're doing percussion. They're examining percussion or acoustic guitar. And before, they never used to do acoustic uh, guitar for the examination. So being relevant to what is in the market and also knowing when and what to offer. It doesn't matter whether I'm in a Christian, I decide I'm just offering a Christian, whether I'm offering a classical, whether I'm offering pop, but I think the two, the trade teaching and the, the learning should be in tandem. Otherwise, thank you very much. Thank you. But if I can ask the question that Mawira should have asked, the panel, is if music, if, if uh, the music education should be relevant to what the industry requires, how do we grow the industry if all we are teaching is what is required? Right? Just think about that. That, that was Mawira's question, not mine. Mwalimu <laughs> Obaga. And uh, if we can, for the time being, keep, keep the questions very short and to the point so that we can get as many questions in as possible. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Andrew Obaga. A lecturer at uh, Technical University, previously music teacher for many years at Nairobi School. I want to encourage those who are learning, upcoming musicians, that it is very important to have theory knowledge. Theory is the gateway to practical. Without theory, you'll be like a blind person trying to uh, spot a particular area that has already been mapped up. Why I say this is because I grew up in a, a traditional house where my dad was an oboe canoe player and that is a family that was over generations the traditional uh, anchor of the Kisi music, the community from where I come. And I came to open up my eyes 
after having learned through that system. And later on, I took interest in learning guitar the way you are learning. And one time I had an opportunity of being invited because I was aligned to a church as a youth and I was brought to Limuru Conference Center when I was in class six. And it is here I met Dr. Henry Wanjala as the teacher, giving us a lesson on theory of music. And here I was with my group and we were singing, playing our guitars, and we looked out of the ordinary from the rest. But when we were given the first go, five lines and some signs written on it, we were shocked because this was another world. But I want to appreciate cutting short that long story that it is after I was introduced to this, I developed curiosity about how I can write down my sounds using that system because there before with my brothers, we used to compose our music at night and we encourage each other Make sure when we sleep, remember this line in the morning. I may not remember all the lines. And in the morning, we struggled. How did, we, uh, how did this music go? And it was sometimes guesswork, about 70% correct. But here is now the benefit of the theory and why we must be anchored in that theory. It is from where I have become who I am today because of having done that. The relevance of music education in Kenya, the way it is being done today, I should say it is very relevant. Those of you who interact in the music industry with students who went through Nairobi School, Kenya High School, because I used to combine both schools sometimes, know that there is a big number of them that are commanding the music industry out here. And that goes to tell you that what we teach in class is relevant, whether at the high school or at the university. Now, when we talk about the music industry, what do we have in mind? Is it uh, uh, pop or are we talking of both pop and uh, 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 gospel or religious and that brings us back to the question about the curriculum in a Christian university versus the secular universities the curriculum is the same the only difference is the text when you go into a religious uh, composition what departure you have the major area is the text what kind of text are you going to have? Because in religious music, you must anchor in the Bible. But in the secular world, we are open to everything. But all these converge at the uh, music industry. You have gospel singers. Some may have gone through those universities that have a Christian background. And some may have come from the open universities. And therefore, let us embrace what it means is the moment a student is given the skill, it is up to you with the level of your creativity to open up to the area of your own interest. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mwalim. I hope it's a question. Yes, a question, quick comments, and then we'll, we'll uh, wrap it up as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, Make it short and brief. And thank you. My name is Uticus. Ken, Sir Roy, but they call me fortunate. Uh, I'm a rapper, I'm a lecturer, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. So I wanted to ask, uh, what are the gaps that you see in the places and the, in what you do? What are the gaps that this education that we are learning can really help us? What do you think are the missing gaps that, because education does not give you everything. 
So what can we learn that maybe is not really being offered by you guys? Or what is not being offered? Thank you. I was actually going to throw that to the audience, um, but now that you've thrown it to the panelists, maybe we can just quickly comment um, very briefly um, on the, the three comments that have been given, and then um, take one or two, and then wrap it up. Start with Natalie. For me, what is when I meet my students who are generally between 18 and 23, what I miss in them is creativity, and that's what I try at Saudi Academy. Really, that's what we try to inspire, for people to find, because everybody has creativity. It's not nurtured in our formal education system. Up to university level, unfortunately, you're always told what to do. And my challenge to you is that you come with your ideas and you express them, and you be as creative as possible about that. Andiri? I agree with you. Yes. <laughs> I agree with you. I think um, she's very right. I think we, from the time you walk into your class one or your nursery class, the, there is the tendency for us to, to beat out the, the creativity and, and, and the creative part. Um, I happen to be a parent and I realized that my, my child has no art book or music book in the school that he goes to. So they have all the other the other subjects, but we don't um, allow for the for that space for art and for music. And I think as it's a challenge for any musician to creativity cannot be taught. You have to put it put yourself into it. And my and I, I'd, I'd agree with her that your challenge your challenge is to actually think outside the box. Whenever you're looking at something, just take yourself out of the box and look at it when you're out of it and, and imagine that there is none. And then now do, do your thing because there's no set way to do what you want to do because you can know the rules but how you're going to break them is different from how John Coltrane broke the rules then. John Coltrane is a jazz musician from the 50s, just, just in case. Yes. Education. Music education. Pop. Uh, I think the gap is most... Uh, institutions don't train you to establish a music enterprise. So you end up finishing this course, but you can't run a studio. You, you don't have entrepreneurship skills. You don't have leadership skills. So most musicians don't view themselves as entrepreneurs, and they don't view themselves as leaders. So the, the gap is in entrepreneurial leadership. That's where the gap is. So most curriculums, also, they don't teach you in uh, reflective ways, you need to reflect about your character, your creativity, your excellence, your stewardship. So they don't train you to reflect about yourself. And also, they're not interactive and social. So you don't get to rub shoulders with those who are at the top in the industry so that you're mentored. So mentorship is also lacking. So those are the gaps that are there. Thank you. I know there are students here who have gone through this music education at the universities and at the conservatoire and those kind of places and are here in the audience. And so I would like to ask one or two of them, uh, and I can see Sarah's hand is up, what is that gap, right? And what do you, do you think that the music education um, that you've learned has helped you in the industry. If it has, tell us how. If it hasn't, tell us why. Right? Very, very quickly. Um, she's right there in glasses. Sarah is there. Um, right here and there. Those three. And then we can wrap it up. Sarah is there with the glasses. And please make it brief and to the point. Anyway, hello, my name is Sarah. I am very fortunate to be a final year student in KU and a graduate of Sauti Academy, so I think I've had a little bit of both worlds. And in the first place, for me to decide to go to Sauti Academy was because there was a gap in KU. I felt like there was no allowance for me to be creative in what I wanted to be. Because you see, with classical music, the problem I have is you're given a piece, it's in the key of G, you sing forte here, you sing piano here, you don't get to perhaps understand it and, and sing it how you, it affects, or rather how you interpret it. 
So I, what I liked about Saudi Academy was the space for me to be creative within the artist that I am. So in the quote-unquote formal education system, what I'd like to encourage is being open-minded. I think having learned theory helps me as a singer in things like the way Natalie was saying, staying in key, keeping rhythm, doing things like that. So do not change. What we ask as artists is not for you to change the basics. We want to learn the theory. That's why we go to school, right? But at the same time, be open-minded enough to allow us to be in that space where we can be creative, where you don't have... Like, yes, you're guided in this is nice to do, this is a technique you can use in playing the violin or in playing classical piano, but allow me to use that technique with playing what I want and in what I feel I'm expressing myself with. So I think what I'd encourage in the quote-unquote formal education systems is just being open-minded and allowing these creatives to create using the basics that you give us. We are not asking you to take away the basics. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Right here in front. Yeah. The lady in orange. Good afternoon. My name is Eshari. And uh, um, I'm privileged to be a graduate of Saudi Academy. And I've also been to conservatoire. Um, what I feel in my experience as I have always wanted to be a pop musician. Conservatoire helps me to, okay, like when we're in a, I have a band, and automatically I'm the band director. So, of course, I will, it will help me when, I, when they start telling me we were playing a two here, and I'm like, no, it was a seven, not a one, not a two, yeah? Uh, but when it comes to being a pop musician, I didn't find um, Conservatoire much of help because they focus on classical music. But that's where Saudi Academy came in. And I feel like it is more rel relevant to me because I want to be a pop musician. Um, but I feel like it depends on what you want to do. Because now you wouldn't go to Natalie for classical music. You'd go to her. So that's, that's that. Um, oh. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. What I feel is lacking in the industry. So I've been to Conservatoire and I've been to Peña. I've studied and then what? How do I come from Zashari, the upcoming artist, to Zashari, the superstar? Yeah. And I think that part, partly comes into what uh, Mawira was saying in terms of the industry. There's certain components that have to have happen after that, right? It's not just education and your talent. It is marketing and stuff. All right. And right here, right here, finally... We are not this done yet. We are not Our done yet. Please be thinking of your closing statements. Right? Uh, one minute each. Last question. Um, I'm responding to what you asked about how music has impacted us in terms of education. My name is DJ Shock. I've been DJing for a few years. And I'll tell you that for me, music education has been the center of my DJing education. Funny enough, I have not been to the conservatoire. I have not been to Saudi Academy. But I celebrate their existence because I think it's such a tragedy that music and art have been removed from some of our schools. It, it's... I, I think that is where we clap. <laughs> that certainly does not make sense to me because we have more than enough. Africa is a creative continent. So to remove those subjects from the school certainly does not make sense. I have worked with John Kigada. What he has not told you is that he's a rapper as well, a very good freestyle artist. So uh, right now he's donning his education cap for today, but he's a very good MC. 
And I'll say this, uh, my background was in piano. I learned piano for most of my primary school and secondary school education. And we also had music in our school. And the way we were taught, many of the songs that are played right now are renditions of songs that we were taught about before, Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, a lot of Will Smith stuff, Notorious B.I.G. stuff is sampled stuff that we were taught when we were in school. So for me as a DJ, it, I take it to my full advantage because my education is almost 360, and I still consider joining any of these institutions. It has given me an absolute advantage, and anyone who doesn't value music education, the people who do will take advantage of you, I'm sorry to say, because they know more than you. They can talk with people like Quincy Jones and all these veteran producers as peers. They will not talk as someone who doesn't know the industry. In Kenya, it's very easy to be famous. But when you're thrown into the big time leagues like Nashville and Hollywood, you will get lost for sure if you do not have music education. I can even name for you people who are classically trained who are doing very well in our global industry. There's people like Justin Bieber, there's Beyonce, there's Adele, there's Alicia Keys, there's John Legend, there's Ed Sheeran, there's Pharrell. So for people who don't value music education, I'm sorry, you and me are not on the same way like, it's important. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as you can hear, we are winding up. Um, and so I'll let the panelists um, wind up with just a minute to wrap this whole session up. In terms of music education um, and relevance, and music education in Kenya and relevance to the industry, your final thoughts. Starting with our lawyer, Wandiri. Oh, oh, the, the lawyer, okay, yes. Um, the conservator has, uh, has had a long history, and, and we are fortunate to have had that. I'm really glad to hear that there are people who've tested both, both schools and both ways of doing things, and there are very many music schools. I, I look at um, education as you can choose to go to Riara, you can choose to go to Shadrach Kimalel, you can choose to go to Olympic. So it's just a school. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be a musician or you're going to be any kind of, of uh, career person, and, and music is a career, you need to invest in it. So that's the, my, my first, uh, your first take home should be you must invest in your career. The second thing is you, you need to look at yourself as a business, like he had, he had said. So if, if, you, if a doctor is going to spend seven, eight years in school, then as a musician, you need to spend a similar amount of time in uh, investing in this thing that you really love so that it can give you the, what you need. It's, it's, if you're a farmer, you need to water your, your garden. So if you don't water your garden, you're not going to get the best tomatoes out of your garden if, you're after, if that's how you, you, you see things. Um, and the third thing is um, there is, yes, that misconception that uh, conservatory is a classical music school. I, was, I only did ABRSMs, but my teacher, who I still go to, I'm still a guitar student with my teacher, I, I, I've studied jazz, I've studied um, African music, I've studied all, all forms of music at the conservatoire. So I think you just need to, to, to take, a, take a walk to our stand, take a walk to the school, and, and you will find a teacher who will teach you what you need to know. And then the fourth thing is we must be able to learn this language so that we can tell our own musical story in our language. So if you don't know the tools of, of writing the story, the, the, the West and the people who we want to tell our African story about will never know what we, are, what we are talking about if we cannot give them a piece of music that they can play. So let's learn the, learn the language. Let's spread our music out there. John? Uh, the better the theory, the better the practice. You can't separate the two. So if you're going to learn music, or rather if you're going to be a musician, you better know the theory. And uh, if you're going to apply to, to a school, you better know the philosophy behind that school. Are they focusing on classical music or pop music? So don't go there expecting something which you, which you don't meet. Uh, so that's my final take. But actually, if you're going to be in the music industry, you better learn some entrepreneurship skills like branding, you know, these things, excellence, uh, positioning. All these things are very important. So entrepreneurship is also a key. And leadership is also key because you are an influencer, you have fame, you have popularity. You need to maximize that and consolidate your social capital. Thank you. Thank you. Natalie. Okay. So, um, Zeshari, I hear you. What you say, you know, about that gap? Um, 
Yes, we're working on creating an in-between program. The time we really succeeded, I think, in teaching uh, the skill of artist management was with Heart the Band, which was an ongoing process because they actually really heard everything that we said because they never missed a class, which I, I'm not, I know you were also in all the classes, but a lot of my students I see, when they reach the time when we speak about music business, attitude, you know, self-development, we do MBTI. For those who don't know MBTI, it's super interesting to understand yourself. It's a personal development tool to understand your personality better. Um, a lot of students simply don't come to class with these lessons about branding. Why not? Like, show up, you know? Um, but, but we definitely do need to invest in that. Thank you. Um, then, for what you said, African stories need to be told by African people. I completely agree. And that's a challenge, I think, to all of us. How can we come together and create our ABRSM? Because the reason for me that it's irrelevant is because I, it's Western. Why can't we make our voice exercises? I always start my class with an exercise that's, that's like this. That's like there's a chicken in the water. But that's my voice exercise for breath in Swahili. So let's take it as a challenge as an industry to make relevant music education in our own languages with our own music and people and stories. Please let's give a round of applause to all our panelists. Natalie from uh, Saudi Academy, uh, Wandiri Karimi from Conservatoire, and uh, John Kigada from Sifa. Sifa Taifa uh, Foundation. I hope this has been um, as educational and as uh, informative as possible. Please remember that whatever you're doing in music education, you're learning two things, what to do and what not to do. So music education, is it relevant? It's up to you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good evening. <laughs>